Let's do one more example here. Remember our formula for the Taylor polynomial. So you can see this gives us our general nth term. Um, and we want to do the fifth order Taylor polynomial again for um, e to the x this time. So if we're going to go fifth order, we're going to have to have the function and five derivatives. So, but fortunately, in this case, the derivatives are all the same, right? I get e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x again. Fourth derivative is e to the x still. Fifth derivative is still e to the x, and we're doing this at 0. So f of 0 would be e to the 0. Well, any non-zero number to the 0 is 1. So f prime at 0 is also 1, and f double prime at 0 is also 1. No problem in recognizing the pattern in the derivatives. If we start to see a pattern in the derivatives, then that helps us to figure out what the Taylor polynomial is a little bit easier. Okay, so we know all the function and all of its derivatives are always 1. That makes it really easy for us to write out the Taylor polynomial. So if we want the fifth Taylor polynomial, we'll start off with f at x0. In this case, we're doing this at 0 or near 0, so x0 is 0. So f of 0 is 1 plus f prime at 0 is 1 times x minus 0, okay, plus second derivative, we do one half of the second derivative, the second derivative is one, so we get one half of x minus zero, x minus zero is just x, so from now on I'll just write x now, x squared plus one sixth times one times x cubed, so one sixth x cubed plus one twenty fourth x to the fourth um, plus one one twentieth x to the fifth. There's p5, right? If we wanted, we could always keep adding in more terms. We can see the pattern's always going to be 1 over n factorial. All the derivatives of e to the x are e to the x, and all the and e to the x at 0 is always 1, so these are always 1. And then x naught is 0, so we get this. So we could just keep going as long as you wanted, but um, the fifth Taylor polynomial starts stops at the quintic term. Now this is fun. Let's put it in and see what we've got. We've got here, um, I've drawn the graph of e to the x. So here's the graph of e to the x. Let's start to put in the first Taylor polynomial. Let's see. So first Taylor polynomial would be 1 plus 1 times x, right? That's p1. And then we add in, our next term to add in is 1 half x squared. So I'll just put in x squared over 2. Getting better, right? then add in x cubed over 3 factorial, that's 6, and then add, oops, add in x to the fourth over 24. See how these approximations are getting better and better here. x to the fifth over 120. There's p5. And we could continue because we figured out what the pattern is. We're going beyond p5 here. Let's see, 6 times 120 is um, 720. So 6 factorial must be 720, and so on. Let's see, this is an example of, of another one that has an infinite radius of convergence. If you want to get um, better and better, like you could go all the way out here and here and figure out what e to the negative 8 was or what um, e to the sixteenth e to the sixteenth was way out here. If you just add in enough terms, eventually you'll get it. So this forms the basis for how functions how calculators can approximate values for functions. First you have to teach them how to how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Once you can do that, then they can calculate Taylor polynomials so they can they can evaluate any function that has a convergent Taylor Taylor series. So